Okay, my name is Nicole Denamer. I'm going to talk to you a little bit about greenwashing, some of the consumer considerations. Uh, I'm the owner and founder of Sustainable Strategies. I'm also a lead green associate and well AP, and I'm an attorney. So a lot of my work focuses on the intersection of kind of the law with sustainable building design, construction, and other things that relate to sustainability. So we're going to talk about kind of origins. How do we define that term? What are some of the vague terms you should watch out for? Some of the misleading claims. Seals and certifications, because they actually play a pretty big part in greenwashing. And then we'll conclude. So diving right into the origins. Greenwashing as a term is often attributed to Jay Westerveld as kind of a criticism of hotels that kind of years ago were just encouraging guests to reuse towels and not doing much else. Hotels are obviously doing a bit better now. Um, and then in 2007, Joel Macauer of Green Biz published the Six, Sin Six Sins of Greenwashing, which you can check out. Um, those kind of put a framework around that term um, and some concrete uh, examples to it. So there's really a market incentive to greenwash as well. Consumers are willing to pay more. Uh, Nielsen poll found that 66% of consumers would actually pay more for sustainable products. So it's kind of a reason why consumers need to be a bit wary. Um, these terms are regulated at the federal, state, uh, the Federal Trade Commission states uh, also self-regulated in some instances and by social media. Consumers are kind of putting companies on blast for misrepresenting or overstating um, green or sustainable aspects of their products. You can find hashtags for greenwash and greenwashing uh, and others on some of the social media platforms. So how do we define this term? It's actually a little bit harder to define because it's so amorphous. People bring their own experiences to it. It's generally kind of overstating, misstating, or exaggerating either intentionally or unintentionally the sustainable attributes of products, services, packaging, um, saying that there's wide-ranging environmental benefits or kind of conversely the absence of harm. You may have seen terms like green, eco-friendly, earth first, uh, earth preferred, things like that. Um, very vague terms and we all bring our own assumptions and experiences to these terms. And that's why they're um, potentially problematic for consumers when they use them or for marketers when they use them because consumers have so many different ideas about what these terms mean. So pretty vague. Uh, green as actual text can be uh, greenwashing. You can also kind of greenwash by context. An example that's often given is a gas guzzling vehicle placed in a forest. You could make some assumptions uh, about the vehicle's performance uh, because it's in a forest. Um, brand names can also be a form of greenwashing as opposed to describing a product, the actual name. Um, and what we're really on the look for, look out for are unqualified general environmental benefit claims. So just terms like green friendly that, um, that aren't specified. We're not being specific about the environmental attributes that those terms are actually referring to because it's confusing to consumers. So some of the common misleading or confusing claims, recyclable, recycled content, compostable, those are specifically um, regulated by the FTC. They provide some specific regulations and guidance with respect to those terms. Um, but we wanna be mindful of uh, if you see that, is it related to the package or the product or some of the package or some of the product? Asking those kind of questions and, mar and trying to understand whether what marketers are really after when they use those terms. Uh, another example I like to use is you know, you can have a product that claims to be 50% more recycled content than before, but if that increase is actually negligible, like let's say 2% to 1%, um, that's pretty misleading, even though it's technically true. So be on the lookout for things like that uh, and ask questions. Seals and certifications can be super problematic and they're often used because it's hard to describe all the sustainable aspects of a product or a service. So we use seals and certifications. If you look under your bathroom or kitchen sink, you probably find many products with something very similar to what's described here. Uh, shorthands are useful. They can also be kind of dangerous. They imply an unbiased, credible source for most people, and they can also be one of those really uh, broad claims like we just talked about. So one example, this is actually from a regulatory enforcement action by the FTC, is this green promise logo was used by a paint company. Um, but they failed to disclose that it was their own designation. Um, and obviously that fact would be material to consumers. So another example here is uh, this hypothetical kind of green seal, probably looks very similar to something you've seen on products. Um, according to the FTC, this would be deceptive because it doesn't convey the basis for that certification. All kinds of broad claims could be assumed by what's depicted here. Here's a better example because the seal is uh, qualified by the specific aspects that make it quote unquote green approved by this hypothetical entity, biodegradable, recyclable, compostable. So being clear so consumers know what we're talking about. 
So what can you do? Ask questions. At some point this got lost that you have a right to know what goes on and in your body and marketers need to disclose these things and at least not be misleading about them. Seek out resources, the Federal Trade Commission's green guides, which I've given you a couple examples from. There's other consumer product resources as well. So um, take that opportunity to educate yourself and learn more about greenwashing and ask questions. Hope is helpful.